Hey, this is Jackie and Bobby Angel with Ascension Presents, and today we're talking about having boundaries with seminarians, because this is a question, because... This is, this is very ironic. I know, because Bobby was a seminarian for three years, and we met a year and a half into you being in seminary, and and then I, we met again um, a year and a half later, and that's kind of, you were already discerning, like, I feel like I'm called to marriage, but God, you need to give me a sign, it needs to be loud and blunt. Um, but but uh, you were you already knew you were on your way you were you were you were on your way out you knew you knew Bobby and I did not we weren't talking on the phone we weren't in that time period that year and a half between when we became friends I mean we probably would text once every few months to say hey how you doing or pray for me I have a thing I mean we really didn't talk a whole lot I think it was it was a good thing too because then I, there was no ulterior motive. You know, he was like, oh, he's going to be a priest. Like, that's things. He's gorgeous, but whatever. Um, I'm like, ooh, a girl is talking to me. <laughs> but I get questions from girls all the time. I just got one re recently of, like, this guy who I like, he's going into seminary. So what do I do? What? Do, how do we correspond? And, and so the answer is tough, but I'm going to give it to you. Okay, ready? Um, you have to, number one, act like he is dating a girl. So if he is dating a girl... Would you be texting him and calling him and tr going out on alone dates with him? No, you wouldn't. And then on the other side, this is even more difficult and even better, is that you have to act as if you had a boyfriend. Because if you had a boyfriend, would your boyfriend be okay with you talking to this guy all the time to be going out on one-on-one -on -one dates, you know, coffee dates with him? Would your boyfriend be okay with you talking on the phone with this guy? No. So again, it's so easy. And you guys, we're not here to say we've done it perfectly um, when we were single or, you know, we have not done things perfectly. It came back to boundaries that they yeah. were aware of. I'm on a trajectory and they're not here to interrupt that. I think you can share your heart with other people, but there are boundaries. Hashtag guard your heart. Our friend Sarah yeah. Swafford wrote a great book called Emotional Virtue. Go get it, read it, buy it for all your friends. Have um, a book study. Emotional so, virtue. Emotional virtue, Sarah Swafford. Because we understand like chastity and physical boundaries, but emotional boundaries, again, are, are kind of... We don't understand anything really. Nebulous, but, and then I can overshare, and then all of a yep. sudden it, it my you know, the physical wants to catch up to where I have emotionally shared my heart. Or this yep. is where, again, it's prudent to, if you are as a seminarian, your spiritual director, other seminarian brothers, that network. Um, they just call you out, yeah, help you. Yeah, and you I, I would, yeah that yeah. needs to be primary. And I would say too, don't be afraid to call a guy out if they're spending too much time, if there's certain uh, friendships that are becoming too, just from the outward appearance, you can see like this, this may be problematic. I've had really good priests tell me that to be aware, just like they're aware of themselves. Like they're aware, yeah. Like the priest is, and and the priest in training is sometimes this this like safe person that I can vent to and I can share my heart to because I can't mm. I can't to my husband or I can't yes. to my boyfriend and so I go to the priest and men want to help people danger danger and like men danger. we naturally just want to help people and listen oh, and so that sometimes again that can create unhealthy uh, bonds very quickly if we're not careful so I think I had Preach some it. I had really good priest mentors essentially just tell me you need to be on guard. It's not you keep people on guard with the women who <laughs> will attack. We need to keep like people at <laughs> arm's length at all times, yeah. but just be mindful. Now, ladies, obviously, we know we can be on the attack. We know that we can be manipulative and we can use guys. On the other hand, I know that there are girls who have said this. This seminarian keep. I had a girl who's like the seminarian said he loves me. I'm like, oh dear, baby Jesus, and he needs to discern if he's called to marriage. Like the thing is, we need to give people the proper space to discern. And so when we're always in their lives, if we're like their number one, we're not giving them space. It's just again, it's creating this bad. It, we're not able to discern properly. So. You need to give people space. So for the girls, if you are, if there's a seminarian who is texting you those kind of things or who is the one who's initiating the contact, you need to create the boundaries. You need to be strong and say, listen. And if you like them, it's going to be very hard. You need to say, listen, we need to have better boundaries and you need to stop texting me and calling me because you need to properly discern. Yes, maybe we can go to coffee, you know, once every couple months, but we should have somebody else there. You know, it, it's just being prudent. So it's knowing yourself because I, there are times that, you know, we've dealt with people like, you're not even attracted. And that's a different thing. It's I feel like it's when the attraction is there. Um, because we have friends of the opposite sex. It's like, 
it's not even a problem we don't or coworkers, it's like not even a problem. But when you realize again, know yourself, if there is an attraction, that's when you have to be much more careful and much, you know, and you, have better you did, boundaries. You did a great video on attraction and just because I'm maybe attracted to someone doesn't mean I doesn't have to mean something. Therefore I act on it. Yeah. I can um, recognize someone's beauty, their courage, their strength and say, Thank you, Jesus. But what would you say to guys, what would you say to seminarians if they're constantly thinking about a girl? I mean, would you tell them, like, hmm, maybe you're called to marriage, you well, to leave seminary? Yeah, I mean, I would say know thyself. Know that um, um, there's an emotional maturity you're saying yes to within the priesthood. And so if you're not ready, you're not ready. And there's no harm in taking time off. I know great priests that have left hmm. in their training and came back to the seminary. One amazing priest that left twice. <laughs> and then he's like the best homilist I know. Um, just a holy guy and so there's no harm in taking time off know thyself know that if if the celibacy the wholehearted commitment here is something that I can't like I may not be able to live out fully to be honest in your spirit with your spiritual director your formation guys and make that known and we, we need holy husbands just as much as we need holy priests and yeah. it's not mutually exclusive it all glorifies the church and so our goal should really be to help the other person realize their vocation in that detached, I want the best for you, even if that is not me. Mm. Like, yeah. I need you to be fully into where you're at because, yeah, you're not my placeholder. And that leads to both of our misery, believe it or not. Yeah. This, this short term, like maybe pleasurable conversation or feeling of intimacy does not pan out well. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, we, we could go on and on, but that's. I know. Yeah. Yeah, you get this question a lot. We wanted to hit it. So, if you have any other questions related, to ask us at hashtag Ask Jackie and Bobby, or you can direct message um, me on Instagram. That's where I get a lot of. It's at Jackie Francois. Um, so, yeah, subscribe, like, comment. We would love to hear. Um, you know, if you want us to delve further into this, let us know. So. Yeah, we're we're meant to glorify Christ, and part of doing that is again in and through relationships and human relationships, and sometimes that gets off kilter and our own pride and selfishness gets in, so yeah. we need to always pray that God is number one, that we untangle any of these, um, these weeds and these um, desires that may be off kilter. So pray for these relationships, pray for priests, pray for seminarians that we're all able, and those again discerning religious life, that we're able to really hear what God is asking and that we don't get in the way. Yeah. From all of us at Ascension Presents, God bless.